the city of Aarhus in Denmark. 16 nations from all corners of the globe, nine days of competition, and now just two teams remain. Indonesia are today contesting their 20th Thomas Cup final, and they are the most successful team in the history of the competition, having won on 13 previous occasions. But it's been 19 long years since their last triumph. Can their experienced team become champions once more? China, the defending champions, are today contesting their 13th Thomas Cup final and are looking to lift the trophy for an 11th time. Their team is less experienced, but the new generation of Chinese players are keen to show they are the stars of the future. Two teams, the best of five matches, the prize, the magnificent Thomas Cup trophy and the title of World Men's Team Champions. Welcome to finals day at the 31st edition of the Total Energies BWF Thomas Cup. Now, as I was saying, we started with 19 teams with representation from all five continents, and not only teams from Europe and Asia, but also Tahiti representing Oceania, Canada for Pan America, and Algeria representing the African continent. So after six days of group play, the top two teams in each of the group progressed to the quarterfinal knockout stage. The number two seeds, Japan, were the only team to be pushed the full distance in the quarterfinal. That was against the two-time beaten finalist, Korea, when Japan had to fight back from a love two deficit. Then at semi-finals, we had a repeat of the 2016 final in the top half and a repeat of the 2018 final in the bottom half of the draw. The number one seeds, Indonesia, broke the hearts of the home fans as they beat Denmark, the 2016 champions, 3-1. And in the bottom half of the draw, China came through against the number two seeds, Japan, the former champions and the beaten finalists at the last edition. So the... China team arrived early and their traditional team huddle. Already success in the Uber Cup for China. So for a fifth time in the history of the Thomas Cup, 11 years after the last, Indonesia take on China in the final. It's the dream final featuring the number one seeds against the defending champions, the two most successful teams in the history of the competition. So it's the best of five matches, but unlike the group stage, once the tie is won, any remaining matches are not contested. And this is the matchup for today's final. The top ranked main singles for Indonesia, it's the Olympic bronze medalist, Anthony Sinisuka Ginting, up against Lu Guangxu for China. Then it is the first men's doubles, and this is a bit of a surprise because Alfian and Ardianto, who've been playing second doubles, are promoted to first. They are the Asian Games silver medalist and the World Championship bronze medalist. They're up against He Jiting and Zhao Haodong, who have played four of the five matches in China's campaign. Then we'll go to the second ranked singles and the Asian Games gold medalist. Jonathan Christie will play against Li Xifeng, the gold medalist from the Youth Olympic Games. Then it gets very interesting in the men's doubles because no Gideon today. Kevin Sanjaya Sukamolio has been teamed up with the reigning world junior champion, Daniel Martin. They're up against a former world champion, Yu Cheng, and a current Olympic mixed doubles champion, Huang Ilu. That should be a fascinating encounter. And if it all comes down to the fifth and final match for Indonesia, Rustavito, who has twice had to play in this campaign when Indonesia have been two all, and all the pressure is on the fifth and final match. He's up against the left-hander, Weng Hong Yang. Well, you could not script it any better. This is the dream matchup for the Thomas Cup final. The number one seeds, Indonesia, against the defending champions, China. So, Anthony Sinesuka Ginting, the Olympic bronze medalist. playing his fifth match of the campaign. It was only the first of the group matches against Algeria. 
where he was rested. He also has a, a bronze medal from Asian Games. Guangzhou. The pressure on the man who was not selected for either the quarter final or the semi final tie. But due to the injury to Shi Uchi, he's promoted to first singles. And that is ominous if you are a, a Chinese fan because these two players have played twice previously and both won by Anthony Ginting. The last in the very first round of the Japan Open of 2019. 22, 20, 21, 16, as you saw, it was 47 minutes in Tokyo at those Japan Open tournaments. So, Anthony Ginting has won the toss. And he, he chose ends. Ah. He chose to stay where, where he's staying now. Yep, so he chose ends and his opponent chose to receive. So Anthony Ginting gets ends and the serve. Well, for Anthony Ginting, this is his third Thomas Cup campaign. Played four matches in Kung Shan in 2016 when Indonesia lost in the final to Denmark. He's 24 years of age, he'll turn at 25 later this month. In fact, in just a few days time. Born in Chimahi in Indonesia has been a couple of places higher on the world ranking than he is at the moment. Olympic bronze medal, Asian Games bronze medal and when we look at his results so far in this year's campaign as I was telling you rested for the first match against Algeria he then lost to Wang Cholong he had a match point in that second game and three match points in the deciding game before he lost at 25-23. He then beat the former world number two, Chu Tian Chen. In fact, he was 16-20 down in the first game, won six straight points. And in the quarterfinal, he beat Li Si Jia, the All England champion. But in the semi-final against Denmark, he lost to the Olympic champion, Victor Axelsson. So to his opponent, and Li Guangzhou is 24 years of age, but he will turn 25 in two days' time. Born in Shuzhou, in Jiangsu province, on the east coast of China. 178, that's 5 foot 10, and he's 10 places down from his career high of 17 in the world ranking. Just two titles in his career for Lu Guangzhou, that was back in 2018, but lower grade tournaments. Now there, that is very interesting indeed. Not actually selected for the quarterfinal and semi-final, even though he had beaten Samir Verma in three games and came from down in one game against the man from the Netherlands, Kweekel. So our court officials for this one, Iris Metzbalu of Estonia is our umpire and Christian Johannesson from Denmark, the service judge. So, just for the record, Anthony Ginting is going to turn 25 in three days' time. Yes. So, born one day apart in different parts of the world. Level. Play. 
So the all-important first match of the final tie of the Thomas Cup. The top-ranked men's singles, Anthony Sini Sukaginti, up against Lu Guangzhou for China. Delighted to say that former world number one, Morton Frost, is sitting alongside me. First time we've worked together this week. <laughs> yes, Morton, it is. But we cannot not mention the fact that Shi Unqi retired at match point down of his match against Japan, against the world number one, Kento Momoto. And he was well down in the second game, 25, Five. was it? Yeah, 25. But that has thrown all the Chinese players away from their normal placing in the order, and they've all had to go up one place. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a rather bizarre situation, I think. Um, uh, not only um, the way that Xi Yuqi kind of retired yesterday at, on, on match point for Momota, um, I, th I thought that was quite bizarre. You know, at least uh, stand the last point. That's what uh, most players would do. And then um, the victory for Momota. But as you say, if, if he is injured, yes, of course, then everybody has to move up. Yeah, but I have to say, I looked back at that, so I checked it out, looking online, and there was no sign of an injury in the previous rally, and then just said I haven't had enough. I mean, if a player is lying on the ground, we had it earlier this week yes. with the Indonesian player in the women's singles discipline. She uh, ruptured an um, anterior cruciate ligament. She couldn't stand. She yeah. literally could not stand on court for the last point. Yeah, uh, that's it a was, totally different it was bizarre. scenario. It's bizarre. That's the best word I have for it. So your thoughts on this one, tactically? How do you think this is going to go? We, we've talked at length on many an occasion about Anthony Ginting's speed around yes. the court. Yeah, but he um, he's at presently not playing to his very best. I've seen him play much better than what uh, we see him uh, in Finland in the Sudirman Cup and also here in the Thomas Cup in Aarhus. So um, he's definitely not at his, at his best right now. But, um, and, and to me he's playing, as I say, a little bit like a seesaw. One day he's playing good, the next day not so good. One minute he's good, the next minute he's not. It's, uh, it's very inconsistent. Yeah. Um, but I, I think he's got enough to, to win this one. Well, of course, uh, Wu Guangzhou really have to make it as difficult as possible for his his opponent. Get everything back, and and I can see just uh, the body language. Everything when you're watching him on court now, he, he's ready. He's ready to give it all. He's ready to give his absolute best, and he will keep he will keep uh, getting on court for as long as possible. I have no doubt on that. Yeah. That's long. That's just long. Yeah. And, and perhaps extra motivation, the fact that he didn't get selected for the quarter-final or semi-final, he wants to prove a point to the coaches, perhaps. <laughs> or maybe they just rested him because he had had that long, long match against India on Thursday, the last yeah. of the group matches. Your guess is as good as mine. I, I think that if he had been... Um, a very, very important part of the uh, Chinese team. Um, he, he would have played yesterday against Japan. They would have fielded him against Japan. And they didn't, so there are some reasons why they're not doing yeah. that. Oh, that's a good shot. Good attack from Lu. And I think this is one of the things that is not working so well for Ginting at the moment, is his defence. It's, it's rather shaky, I would say. Oh, I like that red shot. Why would... 
defence suddenly go off the ball? Is, do you think the amount of time away from international competition, which all players have had to endure because of the global pandemic, but uh, do you think he's lost his timing? Is he just not quick enough to see it? What's gone wrong? I don't think he's seeing it well enough. Um, it could be lack of um, tournament practice. Um, it could also be that, um, you know, perhaps not been training that hard after the um, Olympics in Tokyo. You know, taking uh, a small break, maybe not been so focused on his training uh, after the Olympics and then of course coming here. Well, of course, all the Indonesian players have an enforced two-week break because they all had to go into the hotel quarantine when yes, they got back. Yes, correct. So, yeah. Yeah, that was a tough one for Puli and Rahayu, yeah, having did. one <laughs> and one to celebrate. <laughs> yes, and then just sitting in a hotel room. Yeah, he was fast forward with one two. Yeah, slow on the defence again, Ginting. Very okay, slow to react. Uh, especially considering that he's got such speed in his legs. Good uh, reactions. Uh, good defensive work from Liu Guangzhou. Jia Hufan leading the. <laughs> the cheers from the Chinese bench. I could easily see her as one of the loudest. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, they played a magnificent women's doubles yesterday. Her and Chen Ching Chen and her are in 57 minutes. Yeah. Seen very, very few extended rallies so far, Morton. Is that nerves or why is that? I think the players needs uh, needs to settle in. Um, but uh, I think Liu Guangzhou actually wants to extend the rallies as much as possible. Um, Ginting, I think he should. He, he's so easily drawn into to, um, long matches. I think he should use his speed in a much more proactive way trying to score points and uh, I don't think he's proactive enough considering the asset he's got in his game. Interesting. Well he does have some heavy strapping on his left knee does Anthony Ginting because I have to say I'm slightly surprised that he turned to play the backhand from deep in court there rather than move his feet to still be able to play with the normal overhead action. Yeah, and he's normally very dangerous from that corner. Lovely constructor rally from Ginting. I like that little hold and flick over his opponent on the backhand side, setting up this really good smashing opportunity. Look at the elevation. Yeah, we only see the smash, but I, I really think that uh, the uh, hold and flick on the lift was uh, excellent.
nice movement from Lou Van Yeah, the, uh, the disguise shot from there, hinting at the front of the forehand, was simply too loose, and that gave Lou Van so many options. And he chose to play that cross at the net, and he saw that Ginting was completely out of balance. So it's, it's actually the loose shot from Ginting that's actually hurting himself. And what is so good about it is that it's the same action he is using, whether he was playing that cross court clear, any sort of drop shots, and then of course that two cross smash we saw here. It's exactly the same action, and that's why it's so difficult to see it's coming. and uh, push, I assume, from the net area, but there's nothing you can do against net shots like that. There's no chance of pushing. And urging his player to... Yeah, that was a beautiful, wasn't it? To lift and, and concentrate on the depth of the lift. Yeah, that was too long. That's too long. But it's a clear sign if that's the instructions that they want to prolong the match as much as possible. Yeah. Yesterday, when Ginting was playing Victor Axis, and it was the same kind of pattern. If the rallies were long enough, Ginting would eventually make the mistake. And I'm sure that's what uh, the Chinese bench has been talking about. Extend the rallies as much as possible, keep them going, mistakes will come. Like that? Yes. And did you notice the big high lift yeah. just before that era? Yes. So Lu Guangzhou is using those tactics that his coach talked about. He wants to make absolutely sure that the lift is not too flat for Ginting to intercept and inject pace into it. Yeah. 
like that one that Skinting did that actually gave Lu Kong Su a, a chance. Yeah, I love the play from Kinson. Really love the play. Was nowhere near the back of the court. No, it's, it's, it's not only too short, it's also too flat, and uh, Ginting is feeding off the pace, and that's why the smash becomes so much better. It's difficult if the lift is very high and landing on the back line, um, vertical on the, on the, uh, on the back line, it's, it's difficult to generate enough power if you're really standing far down the court. Oh, that's magnificent. Well, he's beginning to find his rhythm now, Anthony Sini Super Ginti. And he is an absolute joy to watch when he's in full flow. Play one more. One more punch, clear. You mean? Yes. Okay. It's too easy to anticipate. He's going wide. And that's why what happened again. If the rally is extended enough, the mistakes are coming from the racket of Ginson. Longest rally so far, 35 shots. The opportunity was there for Ginting. Yeah, it's not often you can say he was late, but he was late on that one. Yeah. And as it, it actually managed to drop below the tape, the shuttle, and that made it very diff difficult for Ginting. Yeah, 
Well worked. Very nicely worked there from Ginty. And this is how actually I want him to play. I, I of course don't know Ginty to that extent. But sometimes I feel that he's holding back a little bit because he doesn't know how long the match is going to be. And he's sort of saving some energy towards the end. But maybe he's never getting there because he's playing a little bit too slow. I think he should play like this. And should he get into a situation where he's feeling really tired, fake it till you make it. Yeah. And I think Alice Antonsen was uh, making the same mistake yesterday when he played uh, Christy. Yeah. It was too slow, so very shortly Antonsen started to play just 60, 70, 80 percent smashes and not the 100 percent smashes because he was holding back and yeah. suddenly the match was very much prolonged and I think Ginting is a little bit guilty of that as well here. Yeah, good point. I have to say, I think exactly the same thing with Alice Antonsen. I thought that prior to yesterday's match against Jonathan Christie, he had looked wonderful in his attacking play. Yes. And then suddenly went to a passive. Yeah, he, he doubted suddenly. And yeah. then uh, he was holding back. Yeah. And, and I think he should have went all out. And it's exactly the same with Ginting. He's got that potential to do it. So, should he ever get into a situation where he leaves it? I can't carry on anymore. Okay, so be it. Yeah. That's a lucky neck call yes. to move on to. Because we're in a situation now where Ginting is probably only playing like 70-75% of his max and Lu Guangzhou can follow him. Yeah. And that means that suddenly it's going to be a long, long, long drawn match. And I think Ginting could can finish this at two going all out, a hundred percent. Well, he's lost the first rally of the entire match, and ever since he's been playing catch up, hasn't once been in the lead, Ginting. Uh, lovely play. take the pace out of the, the match, the rallies, play a little bit more loopy shots, making sure that Ginting is standing on the back line when hitting. Oh, yes, that's a lovely shot. He made it count. Yes. Well, I 
left. One of the very, very fast on the drop shot was Anthony Winton. Opportunities, two of them for me, one, two. Opening game to China and Lu Guangzhou. Umpire confirming that scoreline 21 18 and 26 minutes for game number one. Advantage China. then就去注意一点就手快点快点把球快断掉也行如果张手这边能对角尽量对角一到对角你看他球他不抢了这种球球你抢了就最多放一下或者再推你反弹你只要一定好这人站起来球没问题那第二种可能就是他想抢他前面
I know my opponent is having so much pace, but somehow he's sleeping a little bit, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's not coming out. Yeah. And I would be delighted if it was me playing against uh, Ginting, knowing the capability of the pace he's got and not using it. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. But, but you've just got my mind thinking yeah. about past players and, and wonderful examples of yes. how players use that speed and, if necessary, take the foot off the pedal for a couple of rallies and then go back to the pace again. That's a lovely shot. That's it. a simple one at just the bottom of, uh, of the net. and he's chasing Lu Guangzhou around the court and it's of course that beautiful drop shot from the back is so tight to the net and is bringing his opponent way forward and then of course that's opening up at the back but that was really nicely played shots is beginning to cause Lu Guangzhou quite a few problems. Well that was a desperation attempt to the shot wasn't it from the Chinese player. Ginting wants uh, Lu Guangzhou to be ready, sort of at eye contact with the umpire, sort of pleading, 
saying, uh, get him moving. Ginting wants to get the, the, uh, the rallies and the, keep the momentum up as much as possible now. He's, he feels he's on a roll and he's got to maximise it. Great points. is not hidden deep enough into the forehand corner there. Look at this, where, where is Ginting's feet? Yeah. Was he just taking it so early? Yeah, but the thing is, he's got to play them a little bit more loopy so Ginting can't cut them off, and that's what's happening. They're, they're a little bit too flat. Shot. Yes, that uh, should be a winner. Yeah, that's the defensive play being found wanted again. But in terms of errors, it's, it's much, much better from uh, Ginting now. It's, yeah. it's been in, in a good spell. Seven straight points has put a different complexion on this second game now, hasn't it? The theory we had, had before, Ginting was playing very good pace, chasing his opponent, got seven points in a row, maybe slowing down a little bit, maybe losing one or two points, but then he's got to go up in gear again. Exactly, because if you're winning five or six points, then losing a couple, by the end of the match you're going to get to the, to the goal line of 21 points quicker, aren't you? Yes. Oh, and here we saw the same return again. Yeah. It's an awesome return. That's such a lovely shot. Yeah, that really was an inside-out <laughs> forehand cross-court shot, wasn't it? It was. Uh, oh, so, it. to the mid-game interval, Anthony Ginty with a six-point advantage.
Oh, strings gone in his racket. Well, very interesting instruction to Anthony Ginty. Don't rush too much to the net. Wait for the right moment. And then go full speed, another two rallies, then slow down a little bit and then pick it up later. Yeah. Uh, the gap is great enough. And it doesn't mean that he, even though that he's taken his foot off the pedal, that he's not winning points. No, he exactly. can still win, he can still win points. Yeah. yeah. Over committing. Yes, uh, Lu Guangzhou had only one option to play, and that was the cross of the net. It was well played by Ginting. to a third game. I think the gap is too great. The only thing that could 
upset your theory about, you know, this six-point advantage being yes. too much for uh, Luke Wong Short to close down is if Ginting starts getting nervous. Yeah. That could happen. Yeah, because this is a huge responsibility for the singles. That's a lovely, lovely punch there. And it's different for the Chinese player because everybody's saying, well, you're not really the number one. You know, Xi <laughs> uh, Chi has got this injury or certainly pulled out of his match yesterday. So, in a way, he's not expected to win. Of course, he wants to win and yeah, get China off to a good start. A huge underdog. Yeah. And that, of course, makes it a little bit easier to play for Wu Guang Su. Not the same kind of expectations no. on his shoulder. Mister. Only three points away from the third and deciding game. Yeah, yeah, the right foot. Yeah. That was a nice play from Luke and Chu. Anticipation. And then hit it into the net. And I think dropping the racket. An indication that he's absolutely disgusted with himself. Yeah, hugely disappointed. Okay. 
Two points from the opening game now, Ginting. It's long. Can't be long by much. No. That's great judgment. So game point opportunities for Anthony Ginting to level this first men singles in the Thomas Cup final at one game apiece. It's one game all, 21-14, the second game in favour of Anthony Sinitsuka Ginting. One game all confirms the umpire. It's about 52 minutes for the two games, and it's one game all. this one it's like the, the house of cards can just Crumbles. come completely fall apart yeah because yeah. It, it will send some signals yeah. to the rest of the team and because the fact that Jonathan Christie hasn't played that well either he played really well yesterday but that took an hour and 40 minutes yeah. so what has he got left exactly and then there will be pressure on the, let's say, the untested 
first name Star Wars. It's not untested, but it's untested having to shoulder that kind of responsibility in the team of Indonesia mm. in the Thomas Cop. You mean the second men's doubles with... Uh, no, I actually mean the first. With Amphian and Ardianto. Yeah, they are tested, they are they are not tested as the top pair, they've always been the second pair. And suddenly they have to go mm. in and, and... And deliver. And deliver at a higher level. Oh, indecision there. Uh, indecision oh! there too. From Anthony Ginting, immediately turns to his coach, smiles, uh, points to the sideline. Should I have played that? Should I have left it? I have a feeling he should have left it. Look at the indecision, first of all, from Lu Guangzhou. And he's lucky for Ginting. Looks back towards the line, his coach points. And I think the consensus was he should have left it. Well, the, going back to your point, no, I mean, we always talk about the importance of the first match of these team competitions within the tie because it does affect the players coming up. Yes. If the first men's singles is one of your bankers exactly. that you see that you should be winning yeah. and that then doesn't happen there is even more pressure hit on the other players, players will start to think oh yeah. that could happen to me too exactly but i like what Ginting is doing now going more a hundred percent in his attack that was a wonderful attacking shot the last one here and that's what he needs to do brilliant was plum on the line. And now he's starting to ask the questions, I think, to Lu Guangzhou. Watch this match. What's the angle? Yeah. Look at this. Look at that. Wonderful. deciding game was beginning to run away from him. Needed to keep the run of points to five. But the thing is that Lu Guangzhou possibly have to change the tactic as I see it. It worked really well in the in the opening game. In the second game not so well. He's 5-2, 6-2 down now. Uh, if he's got anything to shoot with now, I, I would go for a hundred percent attack. Because Ginting... So, so that's the tactic you want him to, to start yeah. attacking more? Yes, Lu Guangzhou have to start attacking. This is not working anymore. Trying to run and, and no. not working? No. no, it's not going to work. And he's got to change his tactic. So he's got to hit before Ginting hits. Because at the moment Ginting up. Scoring very good points with his yeah. attack. Yeah, and Ginting going to the net, picking up the shuttle, exactly. ready to serve. He's eager to get on with it. Exactly, and that happened in the in the second game as well. That he was suddenly getting the momentum, and he was quickly receiving, serving, picking up shuttles, attacking like this. And uh, Guangzhou, in my book, really have to completely change and go on a hundred percent attack. He can't sit back and do nothing. I agree with you. What I have my doubts about is whether he's capable of doing exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. But still try. Oh, another yeah. lucky, lucky netball for Anthony Ginting. Look at that poetry in motion. Leaping in the air, the hang time, yeah. like a basketball player before he hit the shot. Uh, oh, yeah. that's good play by uh, Guangzhou. I, I like the fact that he dared to play the shot, even though he knew that Kitty was there. 
That's good. Good job, Vincent. His racket carriage here. He's coming from above the shuffle. In fact, it was almost a bit of a backswing there, looking as if he was going to play the fast push and then the delicate little block. in favour of Anthony Ginting and Indonesia here at the change ends in the deciding game. The match clock just ticked over the hour mark. And Anthony Ginting looking in a very strong position now. He looks like a player with a purpose. Yeah. lead isn't it yeah that's a nice punch clear I like that were telling me this morning 1,050 rackets they've done this week. It's amazing. Isn't it? <laughs> they work so hard. Yeah. And they were in Finland as well, have been here for almost yeah. two weeks. And I think there's only two swingers left and that's uh, Tim Willis and, <laughs> and Mark Lawrence. Yeah. 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 So they're busy. They're still <laughs> working away. All these players from uh, the final today. Oh, they're really swinging their rackets. Yeah, they want them all done before they go to Denmark Open next week. Yeah. Oh, they go tomorrow, don't they? Everybody goes tomorrow. Yeah, we all go tomorrow. Yes. Play starts on Tuesday at the Denmark Open. Guangzhou is doing exactly what we discussed. I think after the big game interval, the things they talked about in that interval, I think it's all out, it's all or nothing. Go yeah. for it, whatever, because he is so quick at the nets right now. Oh, 
Hartfield. Great follow-up from Ginting. He was, he was committed. Yeah, he was committed, and it was well spotted by Ginting. Too tight, and he's opening up too early. And look at that! Look at that! Sprinting up to the net to pick up the yeah. shuttle, and then getting ready. They haven't even serving to send a message to the umpire. I'm ready. Exactly. I'm fit. I'm wanting to get on with this. Exactly. I see that. I, I think the players in 80-90% of situations like this should just play a shot to the back line because everyone is just going forward like what Sidhu Bangsu is doing here and not really knowing then I would just play a shot to the back line take it from there which is what Ginting did previously didn't he? He did. He remarked on the fact that yes. Wangfu was over committing and going forward. That's a good lift. Who won so has definitely not given up yet. It's a very purposeful walk and you can see the look in his eyes that I'm still here. Yeah. You can see that. He doesn't seem lost at all. It's sort of remarkable sort of journey into the world of Babington because he didn't play any international junior tournaments at all. But in the recent International games, he got the silver medal behind Xi and Qi. But normally, I mean, all the Chinese players, we, we, yeah, we, we see, talk about yeah. how many medals they've won at all junior championships, exactly. Asian junior championships, but not him, he didn't play any junior events.
Absolutely stranded, but he doesn't even react. No. Nothing. But I think he's playing well, the Chinese player. I think he's doing well. He's he's really asking Ginting to take it. He's not giving it to him. Mm. Ginting's got to take it, and I like that a lot. Keeps making it extremely difficult. Oh, and that's the bad one. Yeah. Start, it's how you finish. Yes. And Ginting, you were a little. Oh, there's a lucky net for for Lord Gordon Jewel. We were a little concerned about Ginting. He looked a little sluggish. You described it as a little sleepy in his yes. movement. Yes. Not literally physically sleepy, but oh, no. sleepy in his movement. And now it's much, much more pace. Yeah. But it is interesting that uh, a player like Ginting, we've seen for so many years already, just 24 years of age, but he's only won four tournaments in total yeah. as a senior player. So he hasn't got that knack, he hasn't got that, you know, I, I'm so good taking these matches, I'm good winning the last one and all that. So it's a big ask, this one, for him, I yeah. think. Mind you, he did win his first three finals, didn't he? It wasn't until 2019 that he'd ever lost the final. That's correct. And then he lost five finals in that year, in that yeah. calendar year. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, well, it's why. Who comes who was nowhere near that. But as I say, it's, it's about learning how to win. Exactly, yeah. And how uh, to close out uh, a match. Exactly, and that's what uh, Lu Guangzhou is is asking Ginting to do. You have to take it from me. I'm not giving it to you. Oh, that's a wonderful clear. Absolutely genius. Look at this one here. And Ginting at full stretch. from the round the head position that reverse slice angled fast drop oh my goodness he was fast coming forward after that and he's earned himself six match point opportunities to get in the easier off to the perfect start in the 20th Thomas Cup final and I think we will have a great smile from Ginting as and when he wins this one he will feel the pressure lifting off his shoulders. Oh, and as well, pressure. You identified it, Morgan. Yeah. First service error of the entire match. And he goes in at match point. Oh, that's a good flick, sir. Well, we've already made the point. 
he yes. has to close out a match. Yes, and he's often got the last point is the most difficult to actually win. Yeah, he's got to challenge. He's challenging. Well, team celebrations at the moment from Ginting as we wait for the instant review. Here we go. It was indeed out. And Anthony Sinisu for Ginting. Yeah, look at that. Look at the celebration. I told Elation. you. Relief. I relief. I told you. We and will a, see a smile. And a big, big smile as he holds the Indonesian flag on his shirt. Yeah. The victory to Anthony Sinisuka Ginting in three games. Coming from a game down, embraces his coach. 18, 21, 21, 14, 21, 16 in the deciding game in a match lasting an hour and 17 minutes. Well, until those last couple of rallies, there wasn't really the overt signs of the pressure that he was obviously feeling. This is the third match point opportunity. The push from Lu Guangzhou long of the back line. He challenges, but Ginting has already started the celebrations. And so, as I say, they were very tame to start with. But then, when the instant review system confirmed that the shuttle was long, the big smile, the relief, and the first point on the board for Indonesia. Well, up next is the first of the men's doubles and Fajar Alfian and Mohamed Rian Adianto take on Herji Ting and Zhao Haudong. Welcome back to Aarhus. Port City, it's the second largest city here in Denmark. Eastern Jutland, and it's just about the geographical centre of Denmark. It's an absolutely beautiful city. 
ancient buildings along with the modern, it all blends so effortlessly. So, one match down and one point on the board for Indonesia with Anthony Sinistuka winning his match. First men's doubles up next.